Hey everybody, I'm sitting here with Steve Watkins, otherwise known as Swatkins. Uh, came in from Portland, Oregon, which is pretty sweet. This guy's known as the musical color commentator of many different bands, uh, an all-around good guy. How's it going, man? Good, man. Great, great to yeah. see it. Yeah. Great to see it. Okay, so you started playing keys, you were saying, when you were a little bit younger, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I've been in, I've been in bands, like, since 12 or 13, kind of on guitar and bass, just smashing around with friends. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, around, like, 15, 16, got really into keyboards, like specifically like vintage, yeah. like Rhodes, oh, yeah. Wurlitzer and Hammond and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff and kind of just built an arsenal of weapons yeah. to yeah. use from when That's you right. yeah. That's real cool. So do you, did you say or do you think that you had certain uh, inspirations musically, certain people or certain genre sounds that you would Oh, kind of for, sh for sure, yeah. My, my dad's a guitar player and okay. so like growing up, he was by far the biggest influence. Taught me all my like open yeah, cowboy yeah. cards, chords oh, yeah. on the guitar, and uh, was constantly playing music around the house. Like he was obsessed with the band. Oh yeah, Four, Robert, four Fifths Canadian. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Dylan, and yeah. uh, but then also was just like a huge like Sly and the Family Stone. Okay, yeah, yeah. Curtis Mayfield, Marvin Gaye, yeah. Ray Charles on Sundays. Oh, that was yeah, like church. Okay. Yeah, it's like church was Ray Charles. Yeah, on the Sundays. good stuff, man. Yeah, and then and then with keys specifically, it was like Herbie Hancock. Oh yeah, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, like yeah. that stuff that just like. Yeah, I, mean, I, I remember the first one of the first Herbie Hancock tunes I heard was Chameleon. Sure. And just yeah, like that's the hearing that, yeah, we yeah. just had like a house party in a basement. Yep. Yeah, man, that's yep. cool stuff. And you know what? I find that type of music like some some people can see over it, but I feel like if you're like a true a true fan of music as an art form, that stuff can just hit you right in the heart. Though. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I yeah, because like I, I didn't have the formal training or background mm -hmm. of like a jazz player yeah. or a classical player, so it took. I, I think my like my foot in the door for at least like instrumental music was like the meters. Yeah. Or like Booker T and the MG. Okay. Just, like yeah. just groove. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. rhythm section Sitting and like really pocket, strong to, yeah. groove and like that's like. That's the stuff that when I hear it in Wolfpack, yeah, or like the the newer like kind of groove based yeah. funk stuff, it's just like oh, like that's yeah, that's how you make yeah. instrumental music Seriously. accessible yeah. without the, all the headiness yeah. of yeah. Yeah. like academia. For sure, man, because that, that stuff just makes you feel it. Like yeah. it's, it, 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 like it not, feels good. It's even like, you don't, you don't yeah. really need vocals. Yeah, even as a technical aspect, it just makes you want to dance every time I hear that. Yeah. No matter where I am, subway, the store, or the train, I just yeah. want to you know I just want to dance and yep. like. That's the thing with that music. And the, yeah, and the stuff that Herbie was doing in the 70s, especially too, like it was so influenced by the Sly and the Family Stone. Yeah. And the P-Funk. Yeah. And, it's like, and he's still obviously just like an incredible jazz player. Yeah. But that, you know, Thrust, Secrets, Manchild, mm -hmm. Headhunters, like all yeah. that, all that like 70s funk yeah. Herbie stuff yeah. is like, he's doing his instrumental interpretation. Exactly. Of right? what's happening yeah. in like, yeah. James Brown and like yeah. other funky. Yeah, and I think stuff, I think yeah. that talks to the whole idea of, of of we kind of mentioned this a little bit earlier in our side conversations, but the idea of either sitting down and playing a piece note for note or just jamming and feeling it out and just seeing what you come up with, whether it be right or wrong, whether you know the theory, if you hit a wrong note, like slide up, you know, like you can just feel it. Yeah, nothing's only, wrong with that. You only ever like half a note off. Exactly, like and like right and yeah. I don't know, I think there's just something crazy about that creative process. Like even if you've never picked up an instrument hitting notes and just hearing for yourself if something sounds right. And like that builds into these totally. big great acts and, and, and yourself, like your playing is just so full of feel. That I mean like I, I follow your Instagram and yeah. stuff and like all these shots of you just feeling these yeah. notes that you're hitting, right? And that that comes from very much like like almost like a garage rock yeah. mentality. Like it, for us it was like a basement, maybe not a garage, <laughs> but it was like we would, you know, just get a room full of instruments like me and my friends growing yeah. up and we would just kind of like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, like, just figure yeah, it out figure on the go, happened. put it together, and, and eventually it was like that was our that was like our social situation too. Yeah. If we heard about, say, like a kid's parents are out of town, they're gonna have a house party. Yeah. Like instead of showing up with like a keg, we were yeah. like a bass exactly, rig and a drum kit. <laughs> yeah. It was like, all right, cool. Where are we was, set up? Yeah, like, that was to, the best thing. To play all night, switch, party, switch right? instruments. Yeah. And like, oh, hey, yeah. I'm gonna go talk to this girl. Exactly. Like, you play you the drums. Yeah. 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 Like, okay. We'll switch it up. It's covered up. And and that just makes it so much fun, right? Yeah. It's less of like a, 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 a environment of having to make music, and it's just you want to do this because it's so full yeah. of joy. Right? right. It's like and the the one you know the one criticism like of the other like the more 
like schooled formal mm -hmm. side of things is that it can really like it can drain a lot of the joy yeah. out yeah. of the playing. Oh know, yeah. It's like they have to break your spirit almost before yeah. they remold you as a musician. Yeah, it's just like, exactly. Well, that's one way of doing it. Yeah. You know, or you can just keep the spirit alive, right? Like you can roll do it. With you it. Can, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and I think like in general for for longevity too, because like a lot of people who are in their 30s and they've been playing since they were kids, most of them don't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, it's just like they just kind of they see a wall yeah. for themselves, or they just they're like they they think that they're not being true to maybe the reason that they first started getting into it, yeah. where they start looking over other people's shoulders and comparing yeah. to like, yeah. oh, why don't I have this gig, or why aren't I, yeah. you know, and, exactly. th and that's gonna, that's gonna rob you of the joy. It's exactly. gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna get to your 30s, yeah. and you're gonna be like, ah, I'm just gonna go work in a job. I yeah, guess, you exactly, know? Just you like see that as a roadblock, right? Or, or recalibrate and do music for fun, strictly, right. and yeah. take the like, I need to scrape a living out of this yeah. thing, out of it. exactly, right? exactly. And it, it's hard, right, and I understand why some people do stop, I get it, but at the same time, like in my mindset of if something gives you that much joy, right, why not? And I guess that's in your point now, like you went from playing in these garages and these parties and these basements to now doing it as a career. Yeah. So how would you say like you made that transition and what were the hardships and the kind of, the, the fork in the road that you had to take to be where you are now? So I think, I think specifically with regard to the first point that we made for like longevity, yeah. it's, it's being unafraid to be a little bit like possessive mm -hmm. and a little bit guarded around the thing that for you makes it a special experience. Yeah. Like if for if for what it if for for your approach in music, if you if you find that like this is this kind of like floats your boat, like that's all the reason you need to like yeah. pursue that and like defend that. Yeah. Like take care of that thing. You want to grow that garden. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas like this idea that you always need a better gig or more money or you need this type of recognition, this many numbers on social media, yeah. all of that stuff will kill you. That yeah. will just oh, kill, yeah. Yeah. that like, that just saps the joy out of it. it yeah. and I think for people who want to do it for their whole lives, they they can articulate what about the thing is magic mm -hmm. and they're not afraid to stand up for it. Yeah. They can like yeah. go to fucking bat for it. And you have to, yeah. you really have to at that point. Because right? yeah. if you don't, it can just slip through the cracks or fall behind that wall of do I really love this, or am I worrying too much about these issues? Yeah, or these? It's, as soon as the the, the 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 darkest prisons are the ones we build for ourselves. Yeah. Right? And so, you know, to speak to that issue of like a decision or like a fork in the path, like for me, I had I had pretty much convinced myself that I, you know, that I loved music very much, but it was going to be a hobby. Yeah. And that was just something that I was going to do for me and mm -hmm. for my friends, and like, and that. And that in order to keep it pure, that I, I wouldn't expect to like get any money out yeah. of it, you know? And like, but the more I did it, the more that those opportunities like seemed less like a, just like a, you know, like yeah. everyone knows there's no money in the music yeah, industry. Exactly. And, like, and I did it for years, yeah. played gigs to no one, yeah. made very little money. Yeah. But, you know, accumulating those experiences and like, really checked in with myself yeah you know kind of every year a couple times a year like in the beginning like when I'm very very poor yeah I don't have good gigs yeah. I don't have prospects for good gigs I'm just looking at it it's like okay well it's is it still fun yeah good okay then I'm gonna yeah. keep doing exactly. it right and then like along that path starting to sense that like wait I might be able to do like one single serving of yeah. life yeah exactly from, from this and yeah. that's and that's a crazy that's a crazy notion. It is. And conventional wisdom says to squash that notion. Yeah. And there's plenty of invitations. Oh yeah. That are like irrefutable. Yeah. That would tell you to squash <laughs> yeah. that notion. But for me, at a certain point, it, it, I just, I just thought that I was going to be better off, like poor and happy than yeah. like, comfortable and miserable. Well, I mean, I you think know? that really talks to the whole idea. I guess like stemming from what you said, working towards these things. If you're doing it out of a pure place. You're never gonna stray off the path of, you know, if you're doing it because you love music and not to make all this money, yeah. or not to do this, or not to do that, if you're doing it because you love it, you're gonna get to a point where you're either gonna make a decision to do it, continue doing it in this in this pure state, or you're gonna try to either, I don't wanna use the term sell out for the sake of the point, sell out or move on to other avenues of doing sure. this, right? And it's, it's I mean, that's, 
we're talking about a thing that's like easy to be reductionist about exactly. to make it. Oh, it's just black and white. It's, yeah. it's never that simple. At all, right? It's never that simple. You have to like check in with yourself. Yeah. Frequently. Yeah. Like probably, you know, and the more you do it, it gets a little easier. It's one of those things like with any issue of self, if if something goes unexamined for a long time, yeah. and then you do take a look at it, like, don't be surprised if you don't like what you see. Exactly, right? And then that, for most people, is enough reason to just be like, cool, I'm never looking at that shit again. Yeah, yeah, like, and I think that, that really, like, <laughs> checking in with yourself really speaks to the idea of living in the moment and, and being present in both what you're doing but also in your own head, right? If, you, if you're aware of yourself, your surroundings, and your actions, you're hopefully never gonna find one of those pages where you flip the page and are blown and away by like, what oh, you're seeing, right? Yeah, you're this is not, horrific. Yeah, like even if you're not expecting something, you take it in stride and whatever's coming your way, you say, okay, I can deal with this because I'm aware of myself and how I can handle these things. Yeah. Right? And I guess that talks to the idea of like yeah. moving through. And that's and that's I think that's a good that's a good rule of thumb for your personal pursuit of, of music yeah. and like mastery of your instrument as well, because like a lot of especially when I was younger, a lot of my perceived deficiencies in my playing would end up being like, just like pockets of insecurity for me as, yeah. a, as a person, yeah. as a musician, mm -hmm. right? And it's just like, if I'm able to be honest and vulnerable with myself and just be like, look, like I'm not really comfortable playing like honky tonk piano or whatever yeah. it is, then if I can say that, then I can sit down and allow myself to sound like a beginner. Exactly. I can sound like a piece of shit for yeah, a while yeah. until I'm like, oh, okay, thank God I was honest with myself yeah. enough to work through that. Yeah, and then exactly. it's kind of scary anymore. Yeah. The next time it comes up, you're like, I know enough to not sound like a total piece of shit. Yeah, like, exactly. Because like there's no point lying to yourself and lying to other people, right? It's just be honest and be open about the things that you are capable and comfortable of doing, and things just kind of work out a lot better in that regard. It's, it, yeah, and it's, it's, it's cliche to the point of being trite, yeah. but it, it really is like, I feel like, you know, for my opportunities in in the music business or whatever, yeah. like opportunities that I've had with gigs or recording or, or just connections, most of that stuff comes from, you know, A, like taking the time to be good enough so that you yeah. can like muster some self-confidence. Yeah. Then, you know, once you're there, then it, it's, it's a matter of, of being available, you know, yeah. to be around. Mm -hmm. A lot of opportunities are missed just because people bounce early. They don't yeah. like hang and talk to somebody or like yeah. remember somebody's name and yeah. then they're embarrassed. Yeah, organic so they relationships, for, right? Organic relationships. Yeah, yeah. I mean like on, you know, on Sideman gigs for sure. Like I always try to remember the sound guy's name. Yeah. I remember the promoter, the talent yeah. buyer's name and like, and like introduce yourself. Like yeah. don't just be the guy who plays the instrument yeah. and goes home. It's yeah. just like, like, the only thing you have to give that's authentic yeah. is yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Musically yeah. and personality-wise. It's yeah. just like, you can look at your phone, all sound check, and like, yeah. just kind of ghost your way through the gig. And then what What did you give people? Yeah. Like, what did you give? Yeah. You know, it's just like, yeah, you played your part, you didn't fuck up or anything. Yeah. Like, what did you leave behind? Did you leave a part of you yeah. in this thing that you love? Yeah, and those, that, I mean, that's like what grows the gardens that end up being a dream gig, yeah, or just a killer opportunity, a windfall, yeah, man. Like, you know. And you know what? Like in that idea, like not only in, on your side of things, but if like as you do, is leave part of yourself and and put yourself into these moments and these musical experiences. The people walk away with some something more, right? Like, yeah. Like for example, when I saw you guys, you and Alan and the band play in Toronto, I walked away from that going, man, like that was. Spectac I walked away feeling uplifted and feeling a uh, uh, certain energy about myself just going that was something like these guys that's are awesome in it that's right really cool and like that's one of the reasons why I reach out to you because seeing everything that you're doing both uh, on your own with Alan with the other groups that you play it's it really is inspiring and, the, and the, I guess the, the newest uh, or one of the newer things that I've seen that has been really inspiring me again is the positive agenda yes Welcome to the
segue because it's like this is kind of the first time since choosing to make a professional living to scrape a, yeah. a little single serving life out of music that I've done something with my name on it that's like my original music and yeah. and again it's it's terrifying right? yeah. it's just like to do this thing that that there's many invitations to to just self doubt yeah. or to just be like it's it's 100% easier to not do a thing than yeah. to do a thing exactly and so this is like doing a thing that is also like personally vulnerable and yeah. like humbling of course and you know after being a sideman for seven eight years doing my fair share of griping and yeah. complaining about like hey why aren't things working this way yeah it's like why don't you take all that energy instead of backseat driving over here yeah. in somebody else's project and just run things mm -hmm. for you the way yeah. that you want to do it and so i get to hire people that i really look up to and yeah. respect i get to treat them well as best exactly. as best as i can yeah. and 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 try to again and try to Try to do something that's authentically me. Whether yeah. or not that's musically the most killing, yeah. Whether or not it's professionally the most lucrative, yeah. It's like it should be. It should be a, a reflection of of who you are and what you want to promote. Right? Yeah, the the way I want to carry it. And and I'm afraid we're getting like slightly preachy with it because like, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's sort of easy to talk about this like abstractly yeah. or from the position of like having like a good gig, mm -hmm. right? Like I have a good gig, and yeah. so it's it's easier. For me to wax philosophic about like, well, you got to be authentic and you got to do things this yeah. way or else why do it? It's like, so I don't want to come across that way. I think yeah. like, if you're doing music, period, yeah. we're on the same team. Exactly. Right. Like we're yeah. we're on the same team. Yeah. So it's like, so I don't want to be like, it needs to be a particular way. But I found for me, the stuff that like lets me access my my joy, but mm -hmm. lets me keep coming back instead of getting like the the parasitic like yeah. shit drawn out of you. Yeah, it's just yeah. like the stuff that for me really resonates is is trying to yeah, is trying to like leave the campsite in better condition than when you yeah, got there. Yeah, right? of course, you know? man. Yeah. Um, that like that thing has just served me better than running scales or yeah. like emails and phone calls yeah. or whatever else. It's it's, it's 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 something more basic than that, and yeah. and I think that there's for sure a lot of ego to go around, like oh, yeah. just necessarily not even like as, a, as as like a negative thing. It's just like in order to perform, like you need to be comfortable with you that do. with yeah. some ego stuff. Oh, yeah. And I think it's easy to kind of go down that slippery slope of saying that like oh well you know. I like to be stroked in this way, yeah. like maybe not so much this other way. Yeah. But like the the flexibility to be adaptable, to 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 kind of like take one for the team when it's necessary. Yeah. For for the Allen gig to exist, we've all had to sacrifice Allen included, like mm -hmm. but everyone in the band. Yeah. So much we've had yeah. to sacrifice a ton, and that's that's part of when we perform. We know that we're there for a reason. It's yeah. not just because we got the. unknown right because as much as it scares you yeah. and as much as it may be a like a a, a thing that, yeah, the uncertainty like I think there's just something so exciting and not having any idea what's through that door right yeah. and I and I get both sides of it I really do but like I, I personally just love that idea of like and, and, and I think it relates to the the con I think for myself at least uh, in regards to like if I we use the musical example of like if I want to go to somebody's show and like that show is super expensive I'm like if I spend this money like you know I'm gonna be either really tight or it's gonna be really hard to get through the next bit of it's like if I don't how will I know if, if that was worth doing and, and I, obviously in certain regards there's a lot of factors that play into it but for the most part when I do buy that ticket and go to that show something works out yeah and and whether that just be the fact that 
life has a way of doing that, or it's the energy that I put into things, mm -hmm. and the way that as as you were speaking, as we put into things, the, the positive energy, right? The world has a way of throwing that energy back at you. Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah, and it's like it's there's never like an even chip stacking Not exchange, at all. right? Not at all. I mean, you could. You could spend that money and then be underwhelmed by the show and yeah. then not be able to pay rent. Exactly. Like exactly. all that stuff yeah. is still in the realm oh, of totally. reality, right? Totally. But, but I found that like on the whole, it's just like if you if you have the strength, if you if you're in a place to to continue to kind of put that that positive thought out there, it's it's worth a shot. Yeah. If, if, if you have the strength, like yeah. obviously it's like you know. Because of this, like this, this tendency to want the positive thinking to manifest into real shit for yeah. you all the time, that will break you just as quickly as negative thinking. Yeah. If yeah. you if you still if you're going into it with the expectation that there's going to be some sort of reciprocity that you can that's tangible that yeah. you can stack up in some yeah. way, it's just not the case. And and you know, like the other bit of advice that I give to like. To musicians who are like looking for their next good gig or looking for what to do with their career or something is like go do something non-musically related go yeah. on a hike go pitch a tent and stay yeah, like sleep outside for a couple yeah. nights go play sports like go do whatever it is yeah and then when you come back to music like you'll find that you you you've rounded off yeah some of that stuff that like when you're just tunnel vision on like i need my career to do better yeah or i need this gig to do this many tickets or whatever it is like you're you're setting yourself up for disappointment yeah but yeah. like the best like music good music comes from like people who are who are, who are they have something else in their lives yeah they, they have something else informing yeah. their humanity yeah other exactly. than like these rubrics yeah. Yeah. of like how music should go yeah and i think that just plays into the importance of relationships and, and, and being and i guess it really plays into the idea of being kind but as a person fostering healthy and, and mutual relationships like friends and family and those things are such a big aspect of what makes someone who they are. Oh yeah. That like if you have a tunnel vision you throw away and push away all these things, you're, you're kind of throwing away a piece of you, right? And I mean, I, I, and it, it, it's hard to say how that plays in exactly to the musical aspect specifically. Well, yeah. But I think as a whole, for the person playing the music, it's a big thing, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. And, and I think also like the perception of that thing, like part of the part of like what people view the gig as yeah. is like is that's part of the mystique, actually, it's because if we look at the nitty gritty of it, it's just like, OK, we live like animals. We are strangers in our own town and everywhere else. We don't get paid very much. We injure our backs moving. Yeah. Over here. <laughs> so it's like if you look at all that stuff on paper, it's 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 not very romantic. Yeah. But the perception of the gig is that it's just like, oh, like you're living your dream, you're expressing yourself. Yeah. You're, and all of those things are true. Yeah. All of those things are true. And so it's important, you know, I find a lot of the time too, like, especially when you've been on the road for months, the shows get a little bit less special. Mm -hmm. And we still obviously want to put our whole hearts into it. And so yeah. like a good reminder to recalibrate ourselves. Is to is to say something like, you know, this show isn't about my personal experience, whether or not I killed my solo or forgot the weird chord in the song. It's about like this hypothetical person who saved up their wages for a month. They got a babysitter for tonight. Yeah. They put on their nice clothes and they came to the show and they just want to have a good time. Yeah. So like your your yeah. experience as a performer has very little to do with their experience as a but you can't do a show without both sides. Yeah, there's and two so sides of your story. I think it's good to open yourself up out of that, obviously necessary in order to do a good job. Yeah. But like to, to not let that consume your your intake of information surrounding everything yeah, about yeah. that. It's just like, yeah, it's like you should have a good time. Yeah. You should you should have like the flavor of Red Bull that you want in your dressing yeah. room, yeah. whatever whatever yeah. people are like, ah, it's yeah. like it wasn't air conditioning, like yeah. whatever like, the thing was, but yeah. it's, it's rarely like the full picture of what's going on. Yeah. So how would you say uh, that that idea of those energies and those those two sides of the story are different or similar when doing something like the Positive Agenda, which is your project, 
versus playing with Alan or playing mm. with Wolfpack and these guys where it's not necessarily music that you've written, but it's music that you're enjoying playing. Like what, what is yeah. the, how would you differentiate? So, so I guess, yeah, I guess the, the role that I really like to play in Alan Stone's band or as a side man with, with anybody else mm. is like this idea of, of like rising tide raises all ships, like this yes. mutual comfort thing. Like one of my favorite things to do is like in comping, like playing chords underneath the soloist, when you can kind of get the audience to cheer for the soloist, but like by stuff that you're subtly doing, yeah. like you're building tension, right? You're like, yeah. you know, like you're goosing the soloist to like really like take it up to the next level. Like yeah. that's an amazing feeling. Yeah. Right? And in a sense, when I'm fronting the positive agenda, it, it flips a little bit. I need to trust my guys and not micromanage them to be like, hey, you need to support me in this way. It's like, yeah. I hired them because they're gonna make me feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So I can focus on connecting with everybody out in front, yeah. really just pouring myself into this thing where like, it's incredibly vulnerable. Like, I, in order to form a strong opinion about the thing, like music especially, yeah. it's just like, you know, like, we jokingly refer to ourselves as like nerds or snobs, yeah, you know. Yeah. But it's like, and that's a pejorative thing. But, but you don't get to you don't get to get good at something without forming an opinion about it. Yeah. And you don't get to form an opinion about it without being kind of critical. Yeah. Hence, you know, just like people who don't like to listen to themselves sing. Yeah. They're hypercritical of their own playing or yeah. whatever. It's like, in the positive agenda, all of those invitations are still there. I'm just yeah. like, oh, like you know, I play with Alan Stone. Like, what am I doing singing a song? You yeah. know, it's just like, come on. But like. That's okay. Exactly. It's, it's good. It's it's me. It's my voice. Yeah. It's my band. I'm gonna sing the song. Exactly. You know? Why not? Yeah. Right. And and so so in a sense, it's like the anonymity of being in someone else's band is a comforting thing mm -hmm. as well. Um, but it's incredibly gratifying when when I, I play a positive agenda show and it's just like I know that that it, it fits. Yeah. That it's it's not like square peg in the round hole. Yeah. It's just like, oh, like we're we're doing something that we should be doing. Yeah. This is this is this is better than a program. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. Do you have a writing style when it comes to comes to specific like I guess not even specifically the positive agenda, but like your writing style. Do you have a creative process that you you, you think about? Does it start a one way and end another? Does it kind of Yeah, it's it's usually chords first. Okay. Um, or a beat, like a lot of the times I'll open Ableton Live yep. and kind of get like, mess with like the drums or like uh, like a bass and drums like pocket first. Yep. Yeah. And then if it feels good yeah. there on the groove level, then I, then I can kind of let my brain go to melody or yeah. like other places too. But a, a, a lot of the times on keys, it's really just like, some like pretty chords that I can sort of voice lead a melody. Like, yeah. oh, this one kind of wants to land right here. You know, yeah. like that, that type of movement. Um, I, I love working with other people too, like bouncing ideas off each other. Um, me and Alan have written a couple of great songs like where he's got a piece yeah. and I've got a totally unrelated other yeah. piece and we kind of Frankenstein it together yeah. and it's like, oh, like that's the song. Yeah, like know? it was supposed to be like this yeah. somehow. Right? Whereas like, you know, I think both Alan and myself, we have tendencies to kind of want to like poop the thing out fully formed. Yeah. Just be like, we here's the song. Yeah. And it's like it just doesn't always happen. Yeah. Like, yeah. It it's, it's, you kind of like I have like a chorus. Yeah. Or like that's it. Yeah. I just have this riff, and then it, I have a million of those that would just sit in the archives. Yeah. Until you start to open it up and you're just like, oh, yeah. like maybe, maybe this bridge goes with this yeah, like chorus. Yeah. it all or, together. Like, right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. And okay, so obviously in the positive agenda, the talk box yeah. is a big thing. Oh yeah. And man, this is like I find the talk box so cool. But yeah. I've never seen anybody do a talk box like you. Like when did you start doing that? Like So that it's like directly influenced from Roger Troutman. Okay. And Zach, yeah. Who I think he got it really from Stevie Wonder back in the day. Mm -hmm. Who was like one of the first ones to hook up a synthesizer to the talk box? Yeah, and like so, most most people are familiar with like the guitar. Yeah, like Peter Frampton. Peter Frampton do thing. feel like like yeah. I mean, like that type of, of of delivery, which is legit and awesome in yeah. its own right. The difference with the synth is that you get infinite sustain instead of guitar, where you, you go, you hit the note, you get a loud attack, yeah. and then it quickly decays. The synth can 
hold notes, yeah. and then you can like put in the little LFO to ah, the, yeah. the vocalish Man. vibrato, and it it's it's a crazy process. It's informed my playing the whole time too, yeah. because I play differently through the talk box, the same way you, you play an organ different than a piano yeah. or an electric different than a yeah. guitar. sound is shooting up into your mouth, right? Yeah. It's resonating your whole dome, and you're thinking in terms of notes and like your phrasing, like your normal musical yeah. cadence, and then also like breath, and like yeah. how would a vocalist deliver this line, and can I mimic those scoops yeah. and little embellishments, and yeah. like all that stuff is just like kind of obsessed with it. Like, it's I, like so I, cool. I first started doing it probably probably a little more than 10 years ago. I had a, a vocoder oh, yeah. too, which is yeah. like a different effect, but similar in delivery. And then once I started listening to Zap and the early Stevie stuff, I was just like, oh, that's the sound. Cause it's, it's much more aggressive yeah. than a vocoder. It's just, and you can solo with like, it's you can really so make different, it an so expressive cool. yeah. lyrical voice. I mean, yeah. it's, it's its own yeah. thing. It really is, yeah. man. It's so cool. And I, I just love Thanks. Seeing that, Thanks. like you've yeah. seen you do it, it's crazy. It's funny. It's because it's like kind of a gimmick. Yeah. Like it's sort of one of those things that people are just like cock their heads. What? What? What's what that? did he yeah. in his mouth? You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's like a crazy thing. But like, but I've tried to kind of get out of my head with respect to that because I, I do like I feel like when I'm really in the moment and I'm performing Talkbox, it's like that's connecting me to the source. Yeah. As much as if it were a, a voice yeah. or like a guitar or yeah. something too. And, and that's the thing, like, I I guess, like, when I first saw Talk Box, I was the exact same. I was like, what's the two doing? Yeah, what, like, what? how does that work? Yeah, but, like, how does that like work? it's such a unique sound, and, yeah. like, everyone's mesmerized by it. It's Every, like a little hypnotic. Yeah, yeah, everyone that I've even either known that has seen a Talk Box in action, or if they haven't, I pull up your video, I'm like, look at this! Yeah, yeah. And they're just like, what is going on right now? Right? <laughs> the way that you do it is very different than the way that you would normally see. It's right? true, yeah. And, it, and it's that on its own is, is... A lot of that delivery too is, you know, like stems from like a deeper belief, like it kind of goes back to just like what I feel like when I'm performing, really with my own band or, or with anybody, it's just like a very important thing to do, I think, is to, is to have a recognition that like you have the ability to really like knock people around a little bit like yeah you know and, and you can perform the expectations people will have their drink they'll, they'll dance they'll sing the song they recognize them they'll go home yeah but you have the chance to really mess with people yeah like man. in a good way like, yeah. to like to like grab them by the lapels a little yeah. bit hey wake up yeah you know? listen to this and like the talk box is like is great because oh. they, they hear it and they're like what is doing that and then they see it they don't. Yeah. They don't really understand what's happening. Yeah, because so. it is a weird, like technically, like you, 
it's hard to wrap your head around that. Okay, this is going here. And yeah. That's going to there, and then that's going. To that's right. Going and on. it's and and like and and the goal is to like you know kind of like like shake them shake them up. But then, like, it normalizes, and they get yeah. comfortable with it, and then it's just a funky, yeah. expressive thing. Again, yeah, man. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. crazy how how you can meld that into these these songs that really just do what you said, like, grab people, right? And yeah. they really do. Like, yeah. and, and on that note, like, are, is the Positive Agenda releasing an album eventually? Yes. Is this... Yeah, we've, we've got some recordings in the works. Um, hopefully... Like fall, winter time, there'll okay. be a release. Yeah, I'm gonna do it all myself. Nice. There's not gonna be like label or yeah. whatever else, but you can, you know, you'll be able to do iTunes or Spotify. Yeah. But I'm gonna invite people to just like, just get it from me. Like yeah, I'll just I'll have yeah. the record. You can just get the record. Yeah, and, man. Um, and it's gonna be all original songs. There's some talk box and some like vocals. Yeah. Uh, we're using like my like my favorite people on yeah. it too. Like there's gonna be some special guests. Really? So, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's gonna man. be really cool. Oh, I'm stoked to hear it. Yeah. I'm really stoked to hear it actually. Thanks, man. And so speaking of a new album, uh, Maria yes. now has a new album coming out. Maria Massa has a new album coming out. She's been making it with uh, partially with my help and, and her band in Portland. Uh, but uh, Jeremy Most, who's Emily King's oh, yeah. guitar player yeah. producer, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. has been has been working on the songs as well okay. remotely from New York and so like the first song that they did he essentially did everything like around her vocal and guitar okay he crafted like the whole song it was yeah. beautiful like ethereal like the, yeah. you know just like it, it's interesting to hear some of the similarities in the sonic imprint from the Emily King stuff yeah who Murray and I are big fans of as well of course um, and Jeremy has a, a lot to do with that yeah. sound um, and then there's other songs that are like, that are like Maria and the band performing the thing. And then Jeremy is adding some guitar or some strings or just doing yeah. like more subtle production yeah. things. But the, the record sounds, it sounds authentic. It sounds genuine yeah. and it's, it's gonna, it's gonna mess people up. Oh yeah, man, really, so, really you, is there a release date set for that one yet? No, Not she's, yet? she's got it, she's got it mastered. Okay. And so like it's out of, it's out of like production status. Yeah still needs like artwork and all that other stuff and she's in the process of yeah like playing it for people yeah yeah like so starting starting to kind of like spread yeah, it around uh, yeah man that's cool um, but hopefully yeah hopefully a re release like maybe like top of next year yeah like that. yeah that'd be yeah. cool man yep so new new allen record too really so oh my so that's goodness. that's the other thing. okay lay that like, on me since um since january of this year the band has been traveling regularly to Alan's studio. Okay. And we all write in the room together. Okay. Which is like a new process for us. Normally it's been Alan or Alan with somebody else, or maybe me and Alan, and then the band kind of arranges the tune yeah. live, right? But this is like this is the first record where we're doing it like it's these guys. It's these guys are on stage and we live together most of the year in the yeah. stinky bus. And we're gonna go and like sit in a room and drink caffeine and yeah. like write music. Man, and that, that must be a crazy experience on its own. It's it's amazing. And, and like for Alan, this is a brand new thing too because he's he's less of a band guy than like yeah. I am. I've always just been in a band. Yeah. And Alan's always been Alan. Yeah. Like he sings great. You know, oh, it's yeah. just like Stellar. It's always just been like Alan Stone. Yeah. And so this is it, it's been really cool for me to like to show him how cool it is. Like yeah. And just like hey like. You know, like we're not, we don't have to go to LA. We don't have to go, like you've got the studio like right here. Like we're gonna wake up, have coffee, we're gonna cook eggs, and then we're gonna go write. Yeah. And then when we're sick of each other, we're gonna go swim in the lake, oh, and cook dinner, yeah. and then we're gonna go write some more. Oh. And then like, you know, and then at night, we're gonna drink tequila, play acoustic guitar yeah. around the fire, oh, we're gonna write man. some more. It's like, and so Alan's got like, we probably put together demos for close to 30 songs, yeah. right? And so of those, we're gonna choose the best ones. We're still talking with the label. We're still talking with producers. So there's there's a lot of stuff that yeah. has yet to come together, but the record is like there. Like yeah. we see what it's gonna be. Makes and it's, oh. it's gonna be like the best yeah. album record that people have heard. And man, just like hearing about that atmosphere, like how can you not just have these great things? Not it's, great. Yeah, yeah, especially, you know, uh, there was kind of like a, a flirtation with the major label system and like, sort of like the dinosaurs, like the last remaining, yeah. like big label stuff who, you know, uh, who wouldn't be interested in Alan. So yeah, so the, the label was almost expecting Alan to be 
like a Justin Timberlake, Robin Thicke. Kind really? Of thing. Yep. Okay. And, and they, and that's not what they told him when they yeah. were getting him to like to sit down and talk with them. Yeah. But eventually it comes out. It's like yeah, they they kind of just, they don't want him to be him. They yeah, want they him to be the, their idea of like like a blue-eyed soul, yeah, pop singer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever he's doing, and. Uh, and it just like it just feels so much better now. He's he he's doing stuff that that feels like it's like it's his like it's in his personal wheelhouse. Yeah. Like it's stuff that like Alan left to his own devices would do, yeah. which is I think what like people who really connect with the guy because he's been around for for a while. And, like, yeah. He's still not a household name or whatever. Yeah. You could almost say that like you know that like maybe they thought it was going to be a different career like when it started but yeah. what it looks like now is just like a dedicated fan base who like wants to hear him yeah, be him. himself yeah, yeah. and, and that's the like, other that's thing that's a great position to be in yeah you know? and that's that's the thing that I've noticed him and you like because uh, I met Alan briefly again when you were in Toronto at that, at that show at yeah. that show uh, in Nathan Phillips Square and both you and him man you have this aura that like when you meet you, you you're present when you're, you know what I mean? And I guess it goes back to that idea of remembering somebody's name and just mm. kind of showing that kindness that like, when you meet anybody, I guess, in that circle, like they're just so genuine to be like, hi, yeah. how are you? The, the rest of the guys in the band are, are awesome dudes too. Yeah, yeah. man. And, and, and Alan is fully a believer in that, like leave it all on the stage yeah. type of thing. Like he wants very much to give authentically of yeah, himself. For, for sure. sure, yeah. Okay, and, and uh, one thing with Alan that I was curious about that I, I don't, was it the, the family, it was like a camping trip, what was it? Oh yeah, the, it? the family field trip. Yeah, can you tell me about field trip. I saw all the posts about this. So it's 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 funny, because like, yeah, it was also kind of a mystery for us, <laughs> yeah. too. It's like, we didn't really know what was going on, but they were like working really hard yeah. at it. Um, what it ended up being was like a first year kind of invite only festival. Okay. And so I think that they were trying to spark interest without like actually opening it up to the yeah. public. So there'll probably be something later this year that kind of like documents what exactly it was. Yeah. But we had um, Theo Katzman and Joey Dosick from, oh, from Voltec, yeah. and then Magnus Tingsek oh, from Sweden, yeah. who produced Alan's last record. And it's just like a dear friend, just yeah. toured with us and is just like the man. Yeah. Um, we had them come out, we did a big show in the Seattle area, and then we all hightailed it to this like totally secluded rural like campground yeah. in eastern Washington. It used to be like a Jesus camp or something. Yeah. And, like, and like now it's just it's just there. Yeah. They built a stage, they set yeah. it all up so that it could be like a, like a mini almost DIY festival. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, we did the thing where we played some Alan songs and yeah. then we played some some Theo and Joey and Tinksex songs, but we all like passed around the point and yeah. like backed each other up and supported yeah. each other and oh, um, and it was it really was it was that kind of like idyllic like yeah. they were all around the campfire eating food together oh. drinking wine and just yeah. like playing under the stars. Yeah, yeah. just having just yeah. having just having a night, right? That's the yeah. thing. Like it doesn't seem like you're playing a show I guess at that point. No, it's way more intimate and like and just being, sharing and yeah, giving, giving just creating yeah. with people you like creating with. So hopefully they, they do it again and it's and it's more like open to the public. Because mm -hmm. I mean as it was it was like I was like, are we like do we talk about it? Like because people are gonna yeah. just be like, oh it's some exclusive yeah. thing that they're not inviting people yeah, to. Yeah, like, yeah. Because it was like it was pretty small. It looked sweet. Yeah, man. like I saw all the gorgeous. pictures. Like yeah. I, I obviously follow you guys all on social on the, media, on the medias, so I've seen yeah. it all, right? So I think like I think next year it'll it'll um, it'll go off and like and they'll actually sell tickets to it. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be, be cool. Man, that'd yeah. be so cool. Because I mean, like, who doesn't love camping? I right. mean, I mean, there's a lot of people who don't love camping, but like in reality, yeah. being in the, in the nature, going outdoors, like I think if, if you're at all interested in that oh, sort of thing, it's like it's right up your alley. It's the best of both worlds. Because we already had the feeling too that it was just like it was a little bit just like, like dude, this is amazing. But yeah. Like, shouldn't, like we should do this for for more people. Yeah. Like, you know? Share this experience. <laughs> it's with kind of just right? our friends here. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. I mean is is great it as was well. Nice right? too. Yeah. And I guess those experience. Oh man, those. Experience. I always use the word experience, obviously, the series is based sure, on sure. it, but I mean, I, I guess in that regard, I'll ask the question now, the word experience, idea of experiences, right? Experiencing that with your friends, but experiencing these shows with other people, experiencing mm. writing, experiencing growth in music, what does it, the word experience or the idea of experience mean to you? Oh, wow. 
So I, I, I mean, I guess I would take it. I would take it like two ways. I would like the first kind of like broad way is just that like, what are we if not the sum of our experiences? Yeah. Just like, you know, like again, maybe just like the dichotomy between like academia and then like kind of like learning it as you go, like yeah. figuring figuring shit out for yourself. Like, you know, like your experiences are. That's I mean that's what we're here to do. Yeah. You know, like for as far as we know. We're the only things that ask the question, why are we here? Yeah. And we're not really supposed to know the answer. We just like bask in the beauty of in the absurdity of the question. Yeah. And so like we're here to observe. We're here to feel and we're yeah. here to experience. Like that's what we're here to do. Is kind of be like I, I forget if this is like a Carl Sagan thing or it's like we are little pockets of like an objective, uncaring universe. That are like so subjective that we are this, we are that. Yeah. We are like the universe, like in a little selfish pocket. Yeah. And that's us. Yeah. We're the only things that that, that we know that are like that. Yeah. So it's like, so we should just be that. Like yeah. we should just experience stuff and try to share it if yeah. you feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. Like, and then so that's like the broad cosmic yeah. one. And then like, and then like a little more to the point is like I think about like RPGs or like video yeah, games. Yeah. It's like you. You like do stuff, and then yeah. you get experience, and then you get to like, yeah, think you get yeah. to make your guy a little exactly. better, you know? Yeah. It's like so that's like that's <laughs> immediately. What yeah, comes the to opposite. Mind. Man, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Well, man. Okay. Well, thank you for sitting down with thank me. Thank you, Joe. I really appreciate it. This has been a great conversation. Yeah, it's great uh, to talk with yeah, you. Yeah, man. You too. Yeah. Keep an eye out uh, for everything dropping from Steve. Uh, positive agenda. The new Alan Stone record. Uh, Maria Matt or Mar Maria Mar Maria Matt. Yeah, new album. Yeah. I got it. Thought so. Yeah. Uh, man, there's great stuff coming out. I'm I'm stoked to hear it and I know everyone else is going to be. So thanks again. Joe Mack. All right. <laughs>